Hello viewers, welcome to this session. I am going to present before you the modules, the theories of policy analysis, concept of methodology and model. After reading this unit, you will be able to understand concept of approach, concept of methodology, concept of model and actors of policy making, starting with the introduction, scholars of public administration and policy scientists have developed various theories, methodology and models related to public policy making over the years in an attempt to explain the process and to teach students and practitioners how to make public policy. Some scholars study the policy process generally and try to develop a knowledge base that could be applied across domains. Starting with the concept of approach. Although various approaches to policy analysis exist, three general approaches can be distinguished. The analysis centric or analy centric, the policy process and the meta policy approach. The analysis centric or analy centric approach focuses on individual problems and their solutions. Its scope is micro scale and its problem interpretation is usually of a technical nature. The primary aim is to identify the most effective and efficient solution in technical and economic terms. The policy process approach put its focal point onto political processes and involved stakeholders. Its scope is meso scale and its problem interpretation is usually of political nature. It aims at determining what processes and means are used and tries to explain the role and influence of stakeholders within the policy process. By changing the relative power and influence of certain groups, for example, enhancing public participation and consultation, solutions to problems may be identified. The meta policy approach is a system and context approach. That is, its scope is the macro scale and its problem interpretation is usually of structural nature. It aims at explaining the contextual factors of the policy process that is what are the political, economic and socio-cultural factors influencing it. As problems may result because of structural factors, for example, a certain economic system of political institution, solutions may entail changing the structure itself. Next coming to the concept of methodology. Policy analysis is methodologically diverse process using both qualitative and quantitative methods, including case studies, survey research, statistical analysis and model building among others. One common methodology define the problem and evaluation criteria identify all alternatives, evaluate them and recommend the best policy agenda. Now coming to the concept of model. Many models exist to analyze the creation and application of public policy. Analysts use these models to identify important aspects of policy as well as to explain and predict policy and its consequences. A model is commonly known as a working intellectual construct by which social or physical situations, real or hypothetical, can be represented. A model sometimes connotes an ideal to be achieved or a pattern to be followed, such as a model of state constitution. But as it is generally used in political science, such value connotation is lacking. Most models are simply intellectual constructs used to organize thought and direct research. 
models typically include sets of data, their analysis and determination of relationships. These help the model builders to explain or predict. Policy is a product likely to be determined, implemented and evaluated by the government institutions. A policy will not become a public policy until it is legitimized by government entity concerned. Government policy provides legal powers that demand obligations from and command loyalty of the citizens. This type of policy has its punitive components. The structure of various government institutions contributes to the context of public policy. The constitution serves as the highest kind of policy to which all other policies must subscribe. Laws passed by parliament, executive orders and judicial decisions come second in terms of relevance and priority. The relationship among these political and administrative institutions of government determines at large the content of public policy. This also clearly describes and visualizes how the doctrine of separation of power and politics administration dichotomy operate. Administrative scientists have developed many models, theories, approaches, concepts and schemes for analyzing policy making and its related components. Indeed, political scientists have often displayed more ability and zeal for theorizing about public policy making than for actually studying policy and the policy making process. Nonetheless, theories and concepts are needed to guide the study of public policy to facilitate communication and to suggest possible explanations for the policy actions. Those who aspire to systematically study the policy making process needs some guidelines and criteria of relevance to focus their effort and to prevent aimless meandering through the fields of political data. What we find when we engage in research depends partly upon what we are looking for. Policy concepts, models and theories give direction and structure to our inquiry. Theories of decision making deal with the criteria and processes used in making such choices. A policy as defined earlier is a relatively stable, purposive course of action followed by an actor or set of actors in dealing with a problem or matter of concern. Policy making thus typically encompasses a flow and pattern of action that extends over time and includes many decisions, some routine and some not so routine. Rarely will a policy be synonymous with a single decision. The theoretical approaches discussed here include political systems theory, group theory, elite theory, institutionalism and rational choice theory. Although most of these approaches were not developed specifically for analyzing policy formation, they can readily be bent to that purpose. They are useful to the extent that they direct our attention to important political phenomena, help clarify and organize our thinking and suggest explanations for political activity or in our case public policies. Next starting with the actors of policy making. Participants vary in how they view the policy process and in what they seek to gain from rationalists, technicians, incrementalists and reformists. All four types of actors will typically be involved in any complex issue. However, at any one time or for any one issue, 
one or more of the groups may dominate. The four types of participants vary in the roles they play in the policy process, the values they seek to promote, the source of goals for each and their operating styles. Coming to the rationalists, the main characteristic of rationalists is that they involve reasoned choices about the desirability of adopting different courses of action to resolve public problems. This process of reasoned choice first identifies the problem, second defines and ranks goals, third identifies all policy alternatives, fourth forecasts consequences of each alternative, fifth compares consequences in relationship with goals and last sixth chooses the best alternative. This approach is associated with the role of the planner and professional policy analyst whose training stresses rational methods in treating public problems. Often the methods themselves are valued by the rationalist and therefore are promoted. It is assumed that goals are discoverable in advance and that perfect information is available. The operating style tends to be that of a comprehensive planner that is one who seeks to analyze all aspects of the issue and test all possible alternatives by their effects and contribution to the stated goals. The operating style tends to be that of a comprehensive planner that is one who seeks to analyze all aspects of the issue and test all possible alternatives by their effects and contribution to the stated goals. Most readers probably find this approach appealing. It strikes one as commonsensical to be as comprehensive as possible. Unfortunately, both institutional and political characteristics frequently interfere with the realization of so-called rational goals. Technicians A technician is really a type of rationalist, one, engaged in the specialized work associated with the several stages of decision making. Technicians may well have discretion, but only within a limited sphere. They normally work on projects that require that expertise but are defined by others. The role they play is that of the specialist or expert called in for a particular assignment. The technician displays confidence within the limits of training and experience but shows considerable discomfort if called upon to make more extensive judgments. Next coming to incrementalists, Charles Jones associates incrementalism with politicians in our policy system. Politicians tend to be critical of or impatient with planners and technicians though dependent on what they produce. Incrementalists doubt that comprehensiveness and rationality are possible in this most imperfect world. They see policy development and implementation as a serial process of constant adjustment to the outcomes proximate and long term of action. For incrementalists, information and knowledge are never sufficient to produce a complete policy program. They tend to be satisfied with increments with building on the base with working at the margins. The values associated with this approach are those of the past or the status quo. Policy for incrementalists tend to be that of gradual unfolding. Goals emerge as a consequence of demands either for doing something new or more typically for making adjustments in what is already on the books. Finally, the operating style of incrementalists is that of the bargainers who are constantly hearing demands, testing intensities and proposing compromises. Next coming to reformists, 
reformists are like incrementalists in accepting the limits of available information and knowledge in the policy process but are quite different in the conclusions they draw. Incrementalists judge that these limits dictate great caution in making policy moves. As David Braybook and Charles Lindblom note, only those policies are considered whose known or expected consequences differ incrementally from the status quo. This approach is much too conservative for reformists who by nature want to see social change. They would agree with David Easton that we need to accept the validity of addressing ourselves directly to the problems of the day to obtain quick short run answers with the tools and generalizations currently available however inadequate they may be. The emphasis is on acting now because of the urgency of problems. This is the approach taken by self-styled citizen lobbyists. The values are those related to social change, sometimes for its own sake but more often associated with the special interests of particular groups. Goals are set within the group by various processes including the personal belief that the present outcomes of government action are just plain wrong. The operating style of reformists has become very activist, often involving demonstrations and confrontations. Given the striking differences among these four types of participants, it is not surprising that each group is highly critical of the others. Baybrook and Lindblom state that the rationalist's ideal is not adapted to men's limited problem-solving capacities. Technicians are criticized for their narrowness. Incrementalists rely too much on the status quo and fail to evaluate their own decisions. Reformists are indicted for their unrealistic demands and uncompromising nature. Different eras do appear to evoke different perspectives. The incrementalism of the 1950s, the reformism of the 1960s and 1970s, the rationalism of the late 1970s and the early 1980s, particularly in energy, environmental and economic planning. But in every era, our politics is characterized by a mix of participants within and among the institutions. Thus, each group is forced at some point to deal with or encounter the others. The product may favor one perspective at a given stage of the policy process, but the multiplicity of institutions, governments and decision making ensures a melding over time. Over the years, a variety of theoretical approaches have been developed by political scientists and policy analysts to assist their study and analysis of public policy. Although these approaches have not been developed specifically for the policy formulation, they can be readily converted to that purpose. It is important to note that the choice of any approach by a particular analyst depends on his or her inclination, ideological outlook and or training. It may also depend on the nature of the policy under discussion or the level of analysis whether it is at the level of the state, national or international. Equally worthy to note is that these approaches are useful as they direct our attention to important political phenomena help to clarify and simplify our thinking and suggest possible explanations for public policy.